Oh, oh my gosh. Microsoft Fabric is blowing me away. We just saw the announcements. We've been through what the heck it is conceptually, where Microsoft is taking all the data tools you know, you love, and bringing them together and make them available to everyone inside your organization. Talk about enabling a data culture and finding that next uh, brilliant uh, person inside your company is now going to be easier than ever before with these new tools. All right. Now you say, hey, fine, good. I hear they're out now. Are they really out now? Oh, they so are. Oh, I can't wait to show it to you. But before that, I got to do a little something. All right, if you're looking for the best freaking content on Microsoft Fabric, this new platform that's out there, you got to tune into this channel. This Jamoke over here, he's going to tell you all about it. So you make sure that you've liked, you subscribe, you share this with the people at your work. All right, I want this forwarded. I want to see comments down below. I want to see thumbs up and you turn on that alarm bell so you don't miss any notifications. All right. Okay, are we good? Fine, I'm out of here, I'm done. Ugh. Okay, before we head over to my desktop, I wanna remind people of what this is going on here. So Microsoft has taken Azure Data Factory, uh, uh, Synapse Serverless and S Synapse Dedicated, combine those together. Uh, all of your data engineering tools, so Spark, Python, uh, notebooks, uh, and and everything on the data scientist side, uh, your ML models, all those capabilities, along with Power BI, and they brought it all together in a common framework uh, that follows along with what has been so successful with Power BI uh, in democratizing democratizing data analytics, they brought it to the entire suite of all these tools, okay? So you ask, when am I gonna see this? Is this a, a later thing? Is this a now thing? It's a now thing, baby, woo! Oh, so excited about that. Word of caution. Today is May 23rd or whatever it is, it's after that. Uh, uh, this uh, until Microsoft Fabric goes to full production and generally available. Uh, anything you do inside of the sphere, if it's not in a GA state, do not use it for a production workload. Use it for experimenting, testing out, trying out, seeing how things work. All of this content, anything before for it to go to production has to get to five nines of availability. So five not. Five nines, five nines, there we go. Five nines availability for goes to GA. Okay, so Microsoft takes it very seriously. This is just announced, so a little grain of salt on features, functionality, bugs, or whatever is they're gonna work it out. Guaranteed. Okay. With that, let's have it on my desktop. Okay, so when I go into Power BI, it looks just like my regular Power BI, right? I can um Let's see here. I can go in and I can uh, look at everything I've got here, right? So it's got all my regular bar here. I've got my banner. I've got all the reports that I need. I've got workspaces here. I can go into any of these like I normally would. All my buttons, all my things are there as I'd expect. Everything's really good. Uh, generally speaking, this looks relatively the same as I've always had. Except for one thing, one thing, if we kind of go way down to the bottom here, look at this. Oh, oh, what could this be? Well, here we go. If I go down, oh, I cannot zoom and interact with it. If I click on that Power BI, up comes an entire list of options for me to, to use. Now, uh, these fabric capabilities uh, do require you to have a Power BI premium capacity or what's about to become a, a fabric capacity. I'm not sure how much they've released. I'm gonna hold off on sharing any of the details on that because I think that's not yet how that's exactly working, they haven't shared that yet publicly. So I think that's still in flight. But you need to have a Power BI premium capacity to start. 
I think it's available for everyone, though, to begin with, so just be aware that it's out there. I don't believe this is going to be a PPU thing. Uh, it's going to be a premium thing, but the premium capabilities or that fabric capabilities are going to be uh, very low price to get started on, on it. It's not going to be something that's exorbitantly expensive. Uh, like a P1 in Power BI is five grand a month. You're going to be able to get started in fabric for much, 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 much lower, lower than that. Okay. So uh, in order to see any of these, I do need to go into workspace. So I'm going to head into my workspace. And you know what? I want to create a brand new workspace to work on this content. So I'm going to call this uh, fabric data engineering. Right. I want to separate out my content so I can kind of keep track of what I have. Uh, you can have it all in one space or you can can mix and match it. I'm going to keep it separate. So I'm going to say fabric data engineering. Boom. My workspace gets created. I still have, as, as you can kind of see down here, still have my Power BI environment up, but I click on Power BI. And then if I just go down... And I click on this data engineering. Watch what happens when I do that. Blood out. Oh, here is my data engineering experience for the content that I, I'm doing inside Power BI. So I'm now at my data engineering homepage. This is in the same way I was in a homepage for Power BI. This is the homepage that I've got for Fabric. Now I can go and I can create a lake house. I could create a notebook. I could create a new spark job definition. I could put together a data pipeline. Heck, I could even import a notebook. So let's say I've got some stuff running over in Databricks and I wanna try it out inside of here. No problem, I can do it uh, as here as well. Or if I just wanna get started, I can click on, uh, or I can use a sample. Oh, I have to use a premium capacity again. So I wanna make sure I go over to my uh, fabric data engineering space. Oops, go to workspace settings and on my premium tab here. Come on, on my premium tab here, it's going to resolve. And I've got a few options here. I have which type of licensing do I want? Do I want the pro? This is Power BI, Power BI premium per user or premium capacity. This is the one that I need to have. So I'm going to choose premium capacity, and I'm going to choose what capacity I want. And this is the capacity I have available to me. Eureka, available in North Central U.S. So I'm going to choose that. Click on OK. This is going to convert this workspace over to a power or a premium, uh, a fabric premium capacity. Uh, it's going to get going to have a problem saying Power BI all the time. But now I've got this all set up. I've got my data engineering selected. So I'm in my data engineering experience. I've got my new workspace. It is set at a premium workspace. And now if I click on new, holy crap on a cracker, look at that box of content that I have available. I've got data pipelines. I've got data flow gen two. Uh, I've got event streaming. I've got experiments I can run. KQ, a KQ, a lake house, data mo or a model. This model is the the ML model. This is not the uh, Power BI data sets model. Uh, and please note, that's why they're kind of making a change there. I could go into my notebooks. I can go into my reports. Spark job definitions and warehouse preview. Oh, all of that stuff is available for me. I could go and do any of those things. If I wanted, I can also go and create, like, let's check out my data science stuff, right? So, fabric, data science. I'm going to go to advanced because I remember this time, and I'm going to go and I'm going to change this to a premium capacity and select Eureka hit apply. Now that I'm in my new data science space, I got to go over here and change my, uh, my experience here. So now inside of here, I can, I can create my models, my experiments, all of that good stuff. Uh, can I use a sample? Oh, I can even use a sample for like, uh, Ooh, look at this recommended books, fraud detections, time series analysis, title, 
genre classification and uplift modeling. Oh, so much stuff. But I have, oh, oh wait, did, could you see that? Could you see that? I didn't zoom in. Look, I can recommend books using collaborative filtering. I can do a detect credit card fraud, forecast New York City property sales. Holy cow, for time forecasting. I can do title genre classification, uplift modeling, all of this available inside the samples, but I don't have to do any of that. I can just go in. I could create my new ML model. I can run an experiment. I can use notebooks. I can import a notebook. All of that is available for me. Now, I could also go in and I could check out my data warehousing experience. Now, I want to, I'm going to just leave it this to be a little more uh, time efficient. I've got my create my new data warehouse, use a sample or create a pipeline, right? Keeping this simple in the data warehouse world. If I want to try out oh, my real-time analytics, here's where we go and we start to get into my KQL databases, my query sets, and my event streams. I know eventually they're going to get a sample thing here as well. That is coming. Um, what else? What did I miss? I hit, oh, my data factory. Data factory is super easy, super simple. This is my Dataflow Gen 2s and my pipelines. So think Dataflow Gen 2 is your Power Query, Data Pipeline, Azure Data Factory, right? So any of these are available for me, or I could just operate inside my classic Power BI experience and work and function right here. Oh. So what do you think? I'm blown away by these capabilities. I can't wait to do more with, with Microsoft Fabric. Tune into this channel. I got a whole series of videos lined up, prepped, and ready to go that we're going to be creating for you to show you all of the power of Microsoft Fabric. All right? If you have any questions or you have feedback or what are your thoughts on Microsoft Fabric, do you like the idea that we're bringing everything together from from all the various data tools, all into one place, all in one pane of glass with, with an easy to use interface, as well as ability to go in with pro dev tools. Do you like that? Do you not? What's your thoughts? Leave comments down below. Let's keep this conversation going on social media. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Twitter. Heck, you can just reach out to me and just say, hey, Chris, I like it. I hate it. I want to know more about it. I really want to hear your feedback. You guys have a great day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.